It's great to be here today, and really, I'm really excited to have an opportunity to talk about PCORnet, the work that we've been involved in as a real foundation for a national learning health system. Now, when we think about, when we talk about um, national or even just learning health systems, I think we have probably a, a shared vision, even if we haven't seen one, we, we have a sense of what's involved. And I think we all appreciate that there's, there's an, an informatics and science component to that, to that network. There's also really importantly at the center, people, right? Patients, caregivers, uh, the patient's providers. And then the, the system exists within an organization that has the leadership and culture to promote real-time um, improvement of the effectiveness and efficiency of healthcare. Um, key to keep in mind here is again that, that foundation that is both data, information to use to generate evidence about what works best. That evidence then drives care, becomes how we care for patients. And then the care, the questions that we have about what works best, that drives the kind of science that we're, that we're asking or the questions that we're asking. So the circle is, is really, really a critical piece. Now, when we think about learning health systems, we often think about them as a local kind of concept, right? So at Stanford, at Duke, wherever, we build the infrastructure within our environment to create that learning health system. We build the, the IT infrastructure, the informatics infrastructure, and you know that makes, that makes some good sense for sure, but oftentimes the kinds of questions that we really need to ask and answer aren't questions that we can answer in a local environment. So if we're interested in rare diseases, what works best in rare diseases? Um, hard to do that in, in a local institution. Um, Similarly, sometimes the questions we have are about what works best in, in common conditions, common diseases, but again, we need to partner with multiple institutions in order to really answer the question in a robust way. So what I'd like to talk to you today about how we can actually take these local learning health systems and extend them nationally. Um, what are some key features that we'd need to have in that national learning health system? Well, I'll suggest that high on the list is sustainable infrastructure, tools and policies that really make it work efficiently. Um, the sustainability is really important. It's, it's relatively easy to get money to build something once, but if we're talking about a learning health system that operates and functions and, and helps us improve the way we deliver care on an ongoing basis, we have to figure out how we pay for that um, in an ongoing way. The data platform has to be robust. Um, we have to make sure that the data we're using is of sufficient quality that we can use it to inform decision making. And then finally, we have to have people who are engaged in this, who've bought into it, and who believe that this is, this is exactly the, the right way to go. And I use people, not patients here, intentionally, because it really is a, a variety of people who need to be, need to be involved in this. Um, I'm gonna talk for a little bit now about PCORnet and, and really paint for you the vision of PCORnet as a national learning health system. So PCORnet, for those of you who may not know, is the largest investment made by the uh, Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute. And the PCORnet is, is composed of two major networks, types of networks. The first is a patient, or the patient-powered research networks. There are 20 of these in PCORnet. And these are networks that are governed by and operated by patients and patient groups. It's a very motivated group of, of networks. Um, and they are motivated really to engage in the research process and engage in driving the kinds of questions that need to be answered. Um, in addition, there are 13 clinical data research networks. Now, these are networks that sit 
primarily within healthcare delivery organizations, health systems, health plans, some uh, patient, some uh, practice-based research networks. Um, within these 13 clinical data research networks, about 80 different kind of health systems or health care uh, delivery organizations are represented. It's a large, it's a large network. And together, these, these comprise what we call PCORnet. Um, again, patients, at the center in these, in these patient-powered research networks and a robust data infrastructure that I'll, that I'll talk a, a little bit about. Um, so when you talk about you know, 70, 80 plus health systems and we're trying to use their data, for those of you who've worked with, uh, say, a local electronic health record system, you might find yourself wondering, how is that actually going to work? Because even within my local institution, uh, there might not be uh, exact uh, agreement in terms of how things are coded and captured in the system. So we started with a fairly, um, I would say, basic common data model that borrows heavily, heavily from work that others have done, um, work that's been done in FDA's Sentinel initiative, um, work that's been done in OMOP, now Odyssey. We borrowed from what had been done, what's worked before, and said, OK, we'll need everyone to put their data, these health systems, put their data into this common data model. We know it doesn't address everything, but we figure we, it, we get it started this way. Um, the blue circles here are the domains that are included in the common data model now. The lavender circles are just examples of kinds of, of domains that, that we could extend this to over time. So data model really is critical in terms of allowing us to use the data across the entire network. Imagine having a question and wanting to leverage these you know, 75, 80 plus, uh, 80 plus sites. And in order to do that, you had to figure out how each of them coded their encounters, how they, how they defined what an ambulatory visit is. So this is, this is really what, what, uh, what makes this much more efficient. Um, it's critical, though, that every time one of these networks refreshes its data, we have a process by which we can curate the data and do some basic kind of characterization to make sure that things line up as we would expect and that, that there's some consistency across, across the tables. And that's, that's a, key, a key piece of this. Um, we also know from, uh, from what we all know about electronic health record systems that they're not, they're not complete, right? They don't represent all care that, that a patient or an individual receives. And so it's really important for us to link the data that are in PCORnet in these uh, clinical data research networks with other data sources where we have defined, uh, defined patient time, defined person time. And here I've just given a couple of examples, certainly data with from CMS, Medicare and Medicaid, and also actively working with the Sentinel health plans. I think uh, yesterday Dr. Califf may have may have flashed some of those on the on the uh, on his slides, but working with them to begin to bring these kinds of, of data together, as well as with the, the National Death Index. So I want to just talk a little bit about how the PCORnet distributed research network works. And the distributed piece is really important. This is a federated network. Um, data privacy concerns uh, are, are uh, high on the list of, of things that participating institutions worry about. And so this distributed federated approach allows the data to stay behind institutional firewalls. Um, queries are sent to the institutions. Um, and I'll just sort of walk through how it goes. You know, it, right now a researcher sends a question to Pacornet through the front door and there's a there's the website or the not the website the email address you can you can send a question into into the front door uh, that you that you're interested in having answered and that question goes into the coordinating center right Duke Harvard Pilgrim Genetic Alliance work together to coordinate Pacornet and the query the question is translated to a query that'll run against the common data model 
Um, that gets sent to the data partners, to the partners in this network, and they, with the data behind their firewall, get to choose whether they answer or not. And uh, um, they, they do answer, they respond, and then the answer goes back to the, to the front door and, and to the researcher. So this is, this is the process now. Over time, we'll look for ways to expand the, the uh, accessibility of, of this, this process. So where are we now? Um, so let's see, PCORnet uh, began about three years ago. Uh, we spent about the first year and a half um, working, working on infrastructure. And I'm really thrilled to say that, that it's, it's, uh, it's really beginning to pay off. If you look at the bottom line there, you see that our current estimate is that we probably have over 33 million individuals who could be approached for a clinical trial based on the fact that they've, they've been seen, they've had encounters within these health systems within the, last, within the last year. We also have about 68 million individuals who've had m encounters in, in these health systems over a longer period of time. Um, as of the end of April, uh, data for about 110 million individuals are represented in this, in this network, which is a really exciting accomplishment. Um, so what's next? Well, first, we show how this system works nationally, both re with respect to interventional studies and observational studies. Um, some of you may have heard, those of you at Stanford may have heard of the Adaptable study. Uh, Dr. Harrington is the, is the chair of the steering committee for Adaptable, uh, a, a randomized trial looking at uh, high dose versus low dose aspirin for prevention of secondary, secondary prevention of cardiovascular events. PCORnet also has two demonstration projects, um, observational studies underway. The first is uh, looking at a question actually that, that was was raised earlier today, um, that is, is there an association between antibiotic use in kids early on and obesity later in life? So that's one of the questions. And then the other is looking at the comparative effectiveness of different approaches to uh, gastric bypass. Um, I'm personally excited because I think this network not only gives us an opportunity to answer things nationally, but to really leverage that locally. And so certainly at Duke, I'll be taking advantage of the fact that Duke has data in this common data model. We can begin to leverage that as the infrastructure for our learning health system. And with that drive clinical research, innovation, and policy. Thanks so much for your time. <laughs>